on July 14, 2023, India launched Chandrayaan-3, its third mission to the moon. And after 40 days of traveling through space, the mission aims for a soft landing on the moon's south pole on 23rd August. With this, India will become the fourth country in the world to have achieved this remarkable feat of soft landing on the moon after the US, Russia and China. Now, with so much in the news about Chandrayaan-3, you know, you'd have questions and in this video, we'll try to answer all of them. So watch till the end. Why are we doing so many moon missions? Before Chandrayaan-3, ISRO has done Chandrayaan-1 in 2008, Chandrayaan-2 in 2019 as missions to the moon. But one might ask, why are we doing so many moon missions? One reason is that many visionaries of our time believe that we need to find alternate possibilities for human colonization or at least another base location apart from Earth to have deep space missions to understand our universe. And one such prospect is the moon. But before we do this, we need to understand the moon properly. Like, how was the moon formed? What changes it has gone through in the lifetime? How is the internal structure of the moon? What could be the long-term impact on humans if they stay on the moon? And most importantly, do we have water? The essence of life for living beings available on the moon in any form. And the information collected by Chandrayaan-3 will help us get the answer to these questions. As we discussed, only three countries have been able to soft land on the moon. But why is moon landing so challenging? Well, absence of atmosphere. In this one particular aspect, landing on the moon is more difficult than landing on Mars. You see, if a planet has an atmosphere, then parachute can be used to slow down the descent speed. But because of almost no atmosphere on the moon, the spacecrafts have to rely solely on the thrusters and controlling the motion of a spacecraft at such high speeds is a very tricky task. This is the same problem we faced with Chandrayaan-2 when the lander crashed on the surface of the moon. The dust on the moon is not like Earth. It's very unpredictable. Moon dust is very fine with sharp glassy materials in it. It gets into the electronics and damages the pieces of equipment of the spacecraft while landing. The footage of the Apollo landing missions will give you an idea of how much dust is blown off everywhere when an aircraft lands on the moon. The temperature difference between the sides of the moon facing the sun and away from the sun is huge, believe me. 120 degrees Celsius on the sun side and minus 230 degrees Celsius on the sides away from the sun. It becomes very difficult to predict and land on the perfect sweet spot of the South Pole. And these sudden temperature changes put a lot of thermal stress on the materials of the spacecraft. Look what happens to this glass when it is suddenly transferred from hot water to cold water. It breaks. This sudden change in temperature it causes instantaneous expansion and contraction leading to thermal stress, making the material weak. And that's how the glass broke. Why the South Pole? Not just ISRO, but other space agencies are also actively trying to study the South Pole of the Moon. But you can think about it. Why is suddenly the South Pole of the Moon so popular that everybody wants to go there? You see, the South Pole of the Moon doesn't get direct sun. As the moon rotates on its axis, the sun appears to skim the horizon, traveling a full 360 degrees around the terrain. Also, the south pole of the moon has large craters which have been in shadow for billions of years and have temperatures below minus 200 degrees Celsius. Deposits of water in the form of ice have been detected in these shadow areas. One such crater is the huge Shackleton crater with a diameter of about 21 kilometers, which will be specifically studied by the Pragyan rover of Chandrayaan-3. Chandrayaan-3 is taking 40 days to reach the moon, whereas NASA's Apollo missions in 1960s took only four days to reach the moon. Why is that? Chandrayaan-3 is not going directly to the moon. It will orbit the Earth for almost 16 days, gradually raising its orbit, finally taking its slingshot to the moon. And then for the remaining days, it slowly lowers its orbit around the moon. Don't worry, let me explain it to you with an experiment. I have this heavy ball with me. Now imagine this ball to be the Earth. If I keep it over here, and now I have this small marble with me. Consider this to be your satellite. This satellite right now is on the Earth. If I have to take the satellite away from the Earth in one go, I have to give a lot of push 
like this. And imagine, every time I give a push, this is like fire of the thrusters. Means I have to fire a lot of thrusters. I have to use a lot of fuel. I need a very, very powerful rocket. But we can be smart about this. What if we can lose time but save fuel? Now notice what happens if I fire thrusters in a satellite which is already orbiting around the Earth. Look at this. Every time I fire thrusters, the orbit increases. And this is what Chandrayaan-3 has done. So in this method, if you notice, we gradually raise the orbit by firing thrusters intermittently. This saves you a lot of fuel, but you lose some time. And when the spacecraft finally leaves the planet, we call it, in common language, a slingshot. Your spacecraft is going towards the moon. Now imagine, this ball is now the moon. And this marble is your spacecraft. If the velocity of the spacecraft is too high, what do you think will happen? Let me show you. You see what happened? The velocity of your spacecraft was very high. It got slight deflection because of gravity of the moon, but it couldn't stop, right? These type of missions where the spacecraft just passes by, we call them flyby missions. But you don't want that. We want Chandrayaan-3 to land on the moon. First orbit the moon and then land on the moon. So for this, what we need to do? We need to slow down. And for that, we have to apply a force in the reverse direction. For that, I have this piece of cardboard with me. Now imagine, this is going to give me the reverse thrusters for this Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft to slow down. Notice what happens. This time, the spacecraft was able to reduce its speed and go into the orbit. Now slowly, slowly, it will fire reverse thrusters at intermittent points and keep reducing the orbit slowly, right? And that's how Chandrayaan-3 is going to land on 23rd of August. That's one reason why ISRO is able to save a lot of fuel and manages the cost extremely low for its space missions. Now, what exactly Chandrayaan-3 will do on the moon will come back with another video. If this video cleared your doubts about our Chandrayaan missions, then press the like button and subscribe to our channel to see the next video.